Welcome to Cloud's Lead Code Solution. If you want the best mock interview experience in North America, feel free to check us out at bowlstraining.org. Moreover, if you would like to receive the latest tech interview questions and a lot of other things, feel free to subscribe to our WeChat blog here. So today we're going to talk about a problem called a maximal subarray. Essentially, this is giving you an array with the positive and the negative integers. Find a contiguous subarray that the sum is the maximal. So this is a very classic question. So if you don't know the classic solution, so uh, a brute force solution ap apparently is for every pair you calculate the sum. So uh, how many pairs there there uh, there is in this array? So basically, it's O n squared. So you have, you need to have four loop and uh, two for loops and uh, uh, when you are doing the sec the for loop, you will just keep accumulating the sum, so you don't need another one. So basically, the time complexity in that case will be um, O n square. Um, with a little bit of dynam dynamic programming, so what you can have is for dy dynamic pr programming, we always say we first we need a state. So the state, the lookup table i, means the max sum including this index i and then with that said the dp function will look like um, i equals to either the current element or the current element plus lookup i minus one so means if the current element could be already the largest or if you carry over some positive values, you want to sum them together. So with this said, you can easily write a DP solution, which you allocate an array. Uh, we always keep always keep in mind a one-dimensional array can can be reduced into a few variables, and a two-dimensional array can be reduced into one-dimensional array. So let's code it up. So this solution will uh, this solution is also called the cadence cadence solution. Um, Cadence algorithm. So this is basically um, invented by a professor at Carnegie Mellon University. So this will require O n time complexity and O one space. So let's code it up. So this is the edge case. Is there no value? So what's the max? So it doesn't matter. So let's look at the first element. Now we iterate through the array. Based on our function. And the max should be a global max. Okay, now finally we will return max. So this looks correct to me. So let's just run one quick example. So like this one. And so if I change this to, because we know it's already six, right? So if we change it to minus five, in this case it will be five. So so our pre and max first is all four. So now when we have minus one, so the pre is three, and now we have two, the pre is five, and then we have minus five still. It's still, if we, it has to include minus five from zero, so then that has to be zero. So the maximum in that case, I think is five, because we already calculated previously is a 5. So let's see how it goes. Okay, so this will solve the problem. However, the code here asks us to use a divide and conquer conquers uh, approach. Divide and conquer normally will be a n log n type of, type of uh, com time complexity. Just think about the merge sort. So here, um, the idea well, it can be a, this idea can be applied into kind of a tree type of structure. Uh, to calculate the maximal sum, for example, in a binary tree. 
So the idea is for this array, right? So you cut it in half. So you can calculate the left maximal, the right maximal, and then the other the other situation is the the contagious subarray is going across this middle point. So what you essentially you do has to be included in the middle point. So you have the middle point, you go from the left, find the sum, maximal sum, and you go for the right for the for the uh, find the maximal sum. So then the sum becomes the left, either the left or the right or the left or the middle one. So that will give us the O n log n time complexity. And we don't use any extra space, so uh, there's no there's O one space unless you consider the functional the recursion functional space. So let's quickly code this one up. So if this happens, we want to return the minimal value so that the max doesn't does not get changed. Now we have is recurve recurs to the left. Right. Now we need to find the left part, including the middle middle one. Max has to be so has to be every time you you have the maximum value you want to update it. So So now I have both the sums. Now I would return that part. Right part and left plus right has to be included in the middle part. Okay, so let's take a quick look. Index less minus one, so going from the middle part, going to the left, going to the right, find the maximum. Let's see. Oh. 
So that's why it's always good to use scoping, right? Or else this i could be already defined if you want the minimal scope as possible. Okay, so this solution is n log n. Thanks for watching.